Hi, um, welcome to the Q&A recording of the film Stalking Chernobyl, uh, playing as part of 10th European Union Human Rights Film Base. Uh, we're going to have a conversation with the director of the film, Yara Lee, uh, who is joining us from uh, Jeddah. Hi, Yara. Welcome. <laughs> Hello from Saudi Arabia. <laughs> welcome. Um, so, Yara, you're an activist, filmmaker, and founder of uh, Cultures of Resistance Network, an organization that promotes global solidarity. And you directed and produced several documentaries and dozens of short films uh, over the past three decades. And now with your recent film, Stalking Chernobyl, uh, you are examining the underground culture that has emerged in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. So um, I was wondering what inspired you to examine this issue and making this film? I was spending um, extensive time in Ukraine. I was just very curious about what they were going through historically, you know, all the conflicts going on. And people kept saying, oh, oh make a film about our war, our conflict, you know, because I've been covering a lot of uh, issues in many countries, you know, the Syrian war, and I've been in many conflict zones. But, but I just felt like that was already in the mainstream media. And I was like, okay, if I make a film, what could I do here that is still like hidden, you know, that people don't know. And then I was like, wow, Chernobyl became a tourist destination. I myself didn't know that. So when I discovered, I was very like, wow, what's going on? This nuclear meltdown that got transformed into like a tourist destination was just very bizarre. So I started my investigation and I just got more and more like, wow, this is really insane. <laughs> because it brought a lot of philosophical questions. At the end of the day, it was not just this, you know, event per se, but the philosophical issues that came up, you know, you start asking, should we transform, you know, a place that was like a, the most horrible nuclear disaster? disaster into a place of, you know, people go there for pure air. I mean, imagine people in Kyiv, they go hiking there, you know, because they want tranquility. People go there to do extreme sports. People go there to jump from the Duga radar. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and wildlife came back because after 30, more than 30 years of isolation, the wildlife bounced back and there are forests, you know. But the radiation is still there and uh, tourist uh, uh, groups, you know, tour operators say, no, there is no radiation. People can come safely. And so there are many questions and uh, I thought it was a very interesting thing to investigate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, speaking of, uh, you know, um, the nuclear, as it's a nuclear zone, it must be really hard to uh, make the shootings there. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, can you tell a bit, little bit about the challenges, challenges of uh, shooting the film there? Yeah, I mean, I've been, you know, amongst bombs and cluster bombs, like when I was in Lebanon, you know, Israel were cluster bombing, you know, I've been dealing a lot with issues related to gas and the white phosphorus, uh, chemical weapons that Israel used. But it was my first time dealing with radiation and it's this invisible thing, you know, and uh, I, I have to admit I was very scared and I was going with the Geiger and when the stars beeping too loud, I'm like, oh, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> but uh, I have to say this, this film was made as a, as a group effort because there are people who are very obsessed personally and they've been going there many times. We have a Slovakian cameraman who donated like, you know, hundreds of megabytes of footage because he has been documenting. And then I have um, a small crew that also went there. We went there for a very like, limited time. So the film is mainly a mosaic of material that came from many different collaborators, even the stalkers themselves, you know, these kids that go there hiking and spend time and, and became this kind of very underground culture, subculture. They also donated a lot of their footage. So the film is pretty much a puzzle made with many contributions, not just me <laughs> being radiated there and filming. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, film, um, the film is actually, like you said, uh, raising a lot of questions about, uh, you know, uh, everything, like our habits as human beings. We're asking questions about humanity's appetite for risk and forbidden things. But 
we also rethink about our you know high energy consumption lifestyle for instance uh, our planet is suffering as a consequence of our uh, high energy consumption lifestyle so as a filmmaker uh, do you need we need to produce more energy to maintain this lifestyle or do we need to change our habits uh, i was just wondering yeah. as you're an activist that's what i um, would like to ask actually yeah i think this is very apropos you know especially at this time because with coronavirus all everybody had to stop and think <laughs> you know do we need all this busy life and all this clutter and all these things over consumption over production and for me personally it was a paradigm shift because i realized like if i have food a place to sleep you know my lodging my clothing you can have a very simple life and be happy so I, I think this is a very important historical time and these two events, you know, the past and what we are living now make us question and this is a very important time. And uh, I think turning negatives into positives is a very important thing, which is the title of our latest film because it makes us question. And uh, I myself not only want to promote the idea of retracting and living a simpler life, I'm trying to implement that in my own life. So even yesterday I was posting saying, this year I'm just drinking water, running, cycling and swimming, <laughs> making it simple, you know, instead of traveling all over the world, making a million films and running and going crazy. To me, it has been a very important time of breathing and respite and thinking and trying to simplify life overall. A lot of times I even think like the best positive thing we can do for mother nature is to not do anything, <laughs> you know, because instead of producing so many films, maybe I don't need to make so many films. Maybe I'll make one every five years okay. and just try to have a very, you know, small carbon footprint. I think nowadays with climate change and the whole like collapse of the world, Mainly the main focus of all of us is to lower our carbon footprint. And I think this year has been very crucial. This virus is teaching us, you know, for the first time we see wildlife roaming on the streets while we have to be enclosed and wildlife looking at us saying, ha ha, <laughs> you know, now you are in the cage. Don't put us on the cage. Let us roam free. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in countries that have been so polluted, like in China, people can see blue sky for the first time in their lives. <laughs> You know, there are many phenomena that we've been witnessing with this coronavirus that teaches a big lesson. And I think Chernobyl has been the same, you know, we cannot go crazy and just invent more energy to, you know, feed our insatiable need of, uh, of energy. We actually have to need less energy. And this is basically the big lesson because to just have more nuclear uh, you know energy places is just gonna backfire at some point and there are a lot of countries that use a lot of nuclear energy i mean this is a lesson that nobody learned you know even france for example you know most of the energy comes from nuclear and we have a lot of scientists hired to keep on studying how we're gonna <laughs> you know use this nuclear energy further in the future because they say you know talking of a uh, carbon footprint they say it's carbon free <laughs> Therefore, you know, they want to justify nuclear energy because it doesn't produce carbon emissions, but still the nuclear waste is something that no one has been able to figure out what to do with it. So it's not a good path. Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask this question, actually. I mean, uh, your, your thoughts about the future of nuclear energy, because, you know, this nuclear power, we have witnessed that the industry uh, violated the human rights sometimes. Uh, as we had these uh, man-made disasters sometimes, uh, like Chernobyl. And it's a hot topic in Turkey still, actually, Chernobyl, because it uh, affected the whole Black Sea region area. So it's a hot topic uh, in Turkey, but you answered this question uh, before I asked it, so. Yeah, I mean, people have to flip the question instead of finding ways of, you know, creating energy to fulfill the needs, we have to reduce our needs. <laughs> so it's always a philosophical issue, you know, but capitalism is tough. <laughs> Hypercapitalism cannot stop. Sometimes I feel like 
all these moments of uh, breathing and thinking that we should take for you know our own advantage of for survival as a human species maybe when corona dissipates people are just gonna go even more hyper capitalist you know to regain the time lost <laughs> quote unquote and um, and in be even more voracious instead of retracting and slowing down you know we'll see you know we'll see how dumb or smart we humans are yeah. <laughs> still to be seen <laughs> and um, back to your film i was just wondering um the film is dedicated to legendary filmmaker andrei tarkovsky actually so can you tell us a little bit about uh, this dedication um, yeah when i was growing up you know i watch all his films and he has been a great source of inspiration because he was so lyrical so poetic and he talked about big issues in a very subtle way metaphorical way so for me it has been <laughs> an incredible thing and the fact that he made a film called stalker you know and he could like anticipate all these issues and uh in a very poetic way um you know that's why i dedicated to him and I think the film at the end also gets a little heavy you know it lists all the nuclear major nuclear disasters around the world because the film is kind of like an um, adventure film exploration film you know on the forefront but we are trying to bring some of the deeper issues in a more subtle way and I think this is very important because if you just make a very scientific and very serious films young people will not get attracted you know and for me, it's very important to bring young people to think about the big issues. So I made a film that looks like exploration, but inserting some of the philosophical issues inside. <laughs> yeah. And um, maybe uh, for those who don't know, uh, Tarkovsky has this film called Stalker. And we, we are seeing uh, in your film these uh, illegal hikers called stalkers. So there is a, a you know similarity like that. Um, so. It's really interesting. I mean, the, the characters in the film and the, you know, uh, the issues you are digging in, I think they are really important uh, worldwide. So, um, Yara, thank you for sharing your film with us and joining us this uh, Q&A session. Uh, thank you. I hope people send us feedback and we keep things going, you know, because this is just the film to motivate discussion and action. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, thank you. Yeah.